Good day everybody, walk to today's video. This is Jerry from Backcountry Ranch and in today's video I am working on the trailer. I'm gonna finish it off, all the small things, and head back out to the backcountry. As of right now, fire bands are gone. I have a fire in the backcountry. Last video went out to BC. Beautiful spot. This set of days off working on the trailer because it's the long weekend and I avoid going out when it's the long weekend for multiple reasons. So I'm gonna stay home, work on the trailer. And get things prepped so i need to do some more resealing on the roof and this was the stuff that was recommended for me to use and you know has all the good things it says that it's uh where does it say it here hold her or shut her down shut her down yeah right at the top there a fast curing seam and joint sealer designed exclusively for automotive uses Skins over quickly, can be painted in less than 30 minutes, stays permanently flexible, withstands weathering, oxidation, salt water, gasoline, and most solvents. Sounds great. Works great. Problem is, it shrinks a little bit. And because it shrinks a little bit, that causes some issues that could lead down the line for leaking. So I got this other stuff that it's an actual RV sealant. This stuff is white. But it is paintable because I want to put another coat on and uh, self leveling RV flex repair, wet or dry application. I just washed it, can paint over after 24 hours, apply in two degrees temperature and rising. So we'll see. Record temperature is minus 40, 200 degrees. Let's see. Let's get this out and have a look. So this Pro Point pressure wash that I picked up from Princess Auto was on sale. I can't remember the price of it now. I can think maybe a couple hundred bucks. I had that citrus cleaner from before that I also got from Princess Auto. And it's safe for the environment, so I'm going to use it to hose down my trailer. I need to clean the roof before I can put that stuff on. And while I'm at it, I might as well just give it a quick wash down anyway since I'm out. It's nice about this pressure washer that it is not too powerful. So I don't have to worry about like stripping the paint off of it. But it seems like it does a pretty good job. So that took two tubes to go over everything. Reseal it. And repaint it tomorrow because I do need to put another coat on because I only got one thick coat and supposed to have two. And that should cover up the light. Did not take long to get the beer can effect. That's why I got the underlay. So far she's been holding out good. Don't have any leaks and now that I got that tarp I definitely won't be. Got the soldering iron, multimeter, and from the plug inside the trailer, I'm gonna hook up this. It's right down beside the mattress, solder, and some other things I'm gonna be soldering up. So I've decided I'm going to get rid of this plug and just go solder in the four prong because I'm not going to be charging the batteries with traveling because I get enough power from solar. And the weight on the roof is setting up quite nice. I just need to empty out the back to get to the battery so I can disconnect the blue wire. I also need to power it up as well so I can test for power on that plug. So I just got everything apart back here and it doesn't even appear that it's set up to charge. Also, it's hot outside. I just noticed this now that diesel heater fan will run. Maybe it won't turn on. Oh, there we go. Something else I'm gonna have to keep in mind. 
I just realized that now that temperature sensor probably senses that it's warm outside that it needs cooling down. Yeah, not even the wires are wired properly for the harness. So white is ground, brown would be marker lights. No marker lights. Come to the back. I have a right light on. So they got the green wire as the marker lights. The only thing they got right is the ground. So inside on that plug, as you can see, it is wired with ground being yellow and black being positive. In case there's any confusion with anybody. And it's all hooked up. It'll tuck down below as such. 34 and a half degrees. Was gonna start painting the roof on the trailer, but looks like we got a thunderstorm coming up behind us. Wasn't supposed to rain today, wasn't supposed to rain yesterday either, but we sure got a storm. Let's see where the rain is coming down. We need to get started on the mud flaps. We got a tornado warning. Looks like we're gonna get one. After all that time, I think that blade's starting to get dull because these pieces are starting to get warm when you cut them. how much a new blade is in the near future so now i need to figure out why last time i went to use the tig weld it wasn't working properly so we're gonna see what the heck's going on you know the first time i did this i had the heck of a time but in order to activate the pedal you gotta hold it down till the light comes on there we go I think I have it set up. There's no warnings. Seems okay there. I was a little quick, but I'll flip her over and try her again. Try that, see what happens. Throw some holes in her. That's the part I don't get. You're going along just fine, and all of a sudden the metal just blows right out. I don't know what the frig. I gotta grind that out now. Try it again, see what happens. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Ground it out. Still can't. It's all contaminated. I'm gonna bust out the MIG welder and fill it in.
What the fuck's going on with this metal? It's got to be Chinese steel or something. Holy, I couldn't even get the MIG welder in there. What the hell kind of Chinese steel is this? Just gonna take a break from working on the mud flap rack. It's gonna run up to Cabela's because I have this crazy idea and I think it's gonna work. So they have this portable pellet grill on special right now for $399. And it only uses apparently 250 watts. So if that's true, with that big power pack I got that's 1500 watts, I'll be able to theoretically run that for four or five hours without solar. But if I'm smoking something, camping, I will have solar. So I'm gonna go check it out and gonna see if it's gonna work. It's either gonna work or it's gonna be a fail, but if I could take up like a portable smoker out camping, that would be perfect. I just got here, so we'll see if they have it. That's gonna be awesome. Perfect, it'll work for me. 220 watt. What is with this weather? Okay, those are completed. Got the aluminum backing bar. This is a mud flap I got from Pensasado. We're gonna cut that down to size. Mud flaps are on. I don't gotta worry about spraying rocks at people now. Turned out pretty good. I'm almost done, but I just got one project left. Going back to the diesel heater with the fan blowing. I did go out in the evening when it was a lot cooler and it was still blowing. So I also noticed on the screen inside that the temperature was jumping around. So I suspect that the temperature sensor is going bad. So I'm gonna change it out. So if you guys remember, I bought the trailer, came with this spare diesel heater because something fell on it. And broke the fan but all the internal parts are supposed to get so we're gonna see if that temperature sensor is going to do the trick I've already popped it out oh, use a plier there to kind of get it up and then I can pull the heater out so this motherboard's got a couple tabs you need to squeeze together and you can lift her out and here is where that is and there's three plugs on this are three connections but you got to make sure the two wires are on the board so this is the donor one put the donor one in there take our wires make sure those are plugged in and drop that back in place powered up so far nothing all right 
another project taken care of. I think the trailer's finished. Shut her down, it's motherfucking beer time. I'm finished working on the trailer. Hopefully everything is completed now. Oh, it's getting warm out. And that cold beer sure feels good. So, resealed the roof with proper RV caulking. And then put another layer of rubber seal. Also... Took care of the mud flaps and I fixed the diesel heater. So I think everything going forward now is going to be all right. I don't think I should have any other issues. Everything I think that I need to complete in the trailer is completed. So uh, it is what it is. But the biggest thing is that why that trailer wiring was way out to lunch is totally beyond me would have been so much easier if the colors just matched so i had to get 12 volt source out there match up and why there was a a larger trailer plug on there is beyond me because it's not even connected to the battery it's not even connected to the battery so having that seven pin whatever the heck it is made no sense so it's a four pin now that's what's set up for I don't need to hook it up to the vehicle, you know, off a 100 amp solar panel, 100 watt I should say. I get plenty of sun to charge it up. And I'm not using a whole lot of power, you know, in the summertime, uh, the charge stuff, charge my CPAP battery, run the fan inside, whatever. It is what it is. But anyways, motherfucking beer time, everybody. I don't want to thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.